Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the go pedal. Uh, last time we talked about the stop pedal and now I figured uh, we should uh, do the go pedal justice. I like to call the go pedal. Some people call it an accelerator, but you can't call it a gas pedal when it's in an EV. So I'll call it the go pedal. Anyway, there's nothing specific to Tesla or even other EVs with this pedal for probably the last 20 years or so, um, cars have been using electronic pedals. They're, before that, like back in the carbureted days, you actually had a cable running from your go pedal out to the carburetor that controlled the butterfly. Um, when fuel injection came along and the need to control the throttle body under computer control, they switched to an electronic pedal. So, the electronic pedal has been around long enough to uh, go through several iterations and also be cost optimized. So the first uh, iterate, I mean, the bit, let me give you a demonstration so you have some background here. So I've got uh, five volts coming in here and I've wire nutted it on with an LED. So as I press the pedal, you can see the LED comes on and gets brighter the harder I press. It's just outputting a variable analog voltage. Now there's also another wire that I don't have hooked up because this outputs two different analog voltages and they, for a given pedal position, the two voltages are different. And that lets the computer that's monitoring this ensure the signal is authentic. Um, the likelihood of two signals being compromised uh, is very low. Like let's say something got wet or someone intentionally cut wires and twisted them together. There's almost no way you could fake uh, a pedal position that's valid. And plus, if one slope were to fail while you were driving, um, like the voltage just goes away, the car could remain driving for that drive. Um, maybe set a check engine light and then refuse to drive on the next one. I don't know how they implement it uh, in internal combustion world. But... Um, the way Tesla implements this is these two analog signals go to a thing called the pedal monitor, which is uh, uh, running in the second core of the TI TMS320 DSP that's in the drive unit. Um, and its job is just to ensure that this pedal signal is authentic and to cross-check it with the inverter, which is also monitoring that signal, so that there can be no sudden acceleration like there's plenty of ways where voltages could be induced in these wires, um, and they want to make sure that there's no way that you could get a false acceleration signal. So they cross-check those two voltages, and they know for any given position of the pedal, those two voltages are going to be uh, correlated but different. So, yeah, that's how it works. Pretty simple. Now, how does it actually work inside? When these first came out, they simply used a potentiometer in here. Um, and I, if you don't know what a potentiometer is, it's just a variable resistor. It was a mechanical device that would have a, uh, like a carbon track that had variable resistance, and then it had a, a wiper that would move up and down on it, changing the resistance and therefore the output voltage. The problem with those are they're prone to wearing out because they're mechanical devices. If they get dirt in them, the signal may disappear, etc. So they're, those didn't last very long. Some of the, this contributed to the unreliability of some of the early cars that had this, you know, drive-by-wire system. So then they went to a Hall Effect system. And the Hall Effect, a Hall Effect device is basically like a transistor that's turned on by a magnetic field. <clears throat> this is the same sensor that was in the iBooster, if you haven't seen that video, there's a link in the description. Anyway, that that was what was being used to sense pedal pressure. By varying the position of the magnet relative to that transistor, they can read in it a varying analog voltage. And that's great, but they've since figured out how to even get it more reliable and cheaper. So they use a, a thing called inductive eddy current sensing now. And let me show you how that works. So here's one I've already taken apart. There's a cover on the side. You open that and that reveals a circuit board. The circuit board has a lot of strange traces on it on both sides. 
This one kind of looks like spokes in a wheel, and this is concentric rings. And then there's two uh, chips on here. Now I tried to look up the numbers on these chips and they must be house numbered. I'll put the number in the description. So if anyone wants to try, you're, you're welcome to. Uh, but I didn't have any luck finding these particular ones. But a number of manufacturers make chips that do this. And I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, this really simple, cheap circuit board. Um, there's six wires on here. There's basically two separate circuits. Um, one for one slope and one for the other. And each, each one has three wires. It has a ground, five volts input, and an analog voltage output. And then that's repeated for the other, other uh, section. So six total wires that come out of here. And then here in the top cover is just the connector that would connect to the wiring harness. The pins come straight through and were soldered here. And then there's nothing obvious here, but if you take this off, inside you see this strange three-sided piece of metal. Um, and the way this works is, as you press on the pedal, you're compressing these springs. It rotates this, this little device. And this is what um, eddy currents are induced in by the transmit coil on here. It basically sends a magnetic field down to this. That's AC, it's high frequency. And then the sensing coils, there's two of them, sense the position of it. There's other stuff in here. For one, two pretty powerful springs. And to stop the springs from going twang, if you drop the pedal, they have a rubber damper in there. You can hear when I flick it, it just kind of goes thook instead of making a twangy noise. And then this other mechanism is pretty interesting. The springs are pressing on this, which is kind of like a cam <clears throat> that's pushing this piece of nylon, that's what it looks like, into this back wall. And this creates some stiction or friction so that when you press the pedal, you feel like you're doing something. It feels substantial. It doesn't feel like just a spring and a piece of plastic. They did a really good job of making this feel like you're actually doing something important. And that's important for the quality feel of the vehicle. But this whole thing is just plastic. It's a, a glass fiber reinforced uh, plastic. It's really strong. You probably couldn't break this even if you stood on this with both feet. But... Uh, it's cheap. It's easy to manufacture. It snaps together. There's no screws in it. <clears throat> and the circuit board is really cheap. Now I did some research trying to find out <clears throat> these uh, what, what these chips could be on here. Let's zoom in a little bit. I found one that's very similar from Renaissance. <clears throat> it's an inductive position sensor I see. And they make several variants of this. Uh, uh, some of them have digital output, but this one, uh, the one I'm looking at, I think is the 5201, which has an analog output. And so that's basically what they're using in this. And they have a like an example application circuit. So you have your transmit coil, your receive coil that's cosine, and your receive coil that's sine. And between those two coils, they can sense the output or sense the position and then generate an analog output. <clears throat> and I'll uh, put, put this data sheet in the description if you want to take a look at it. Um, again, this isn't the exact chip that's being used in there, but it's, it's probably pretty close. So they have a description, an overview that explains how this works. Um, I, I won't read this. You can download the link if you want to read it. Um, shows how the AC relationship is, is sensed. <clears throat> and then here they show how you'd implement an application for position sensing. It's really similar to this. Um, this metal would be what is induced, the eddy current is induced in, and then you see your other two coils for sensing. And they show what the resolution is and how you get your ranges. Uh, obviously there's a certain amount of art to designing those coils on a printed circuit board, so they produce the desired outcome. And I'll... Uh, Give you a close-up of the circuit board, too. I don't know if you can see the numbers. Again, I'll put them in the, uh, in the description. But there's some test points here, uh, some discretes. There's a couple diodes, and that's about it. Very, very low cost and very reliable. This would be 
not you know the the one of the cost drivers is you have to have a magnet for Hall Effect. This doesn't need a magnet. It just has a little stamp piece of metal for the sensing element, and this is also probably highly resistant to magnetic fields and interference from like RF, like your cell phone, things like that. So yeah, another low cost item. Again, Tesla does not make uh, this uh, pedal assembly. I don't know who does. If, if someone does find out who makes it, um, put it in the comments. Um, it's got a Tesla part number on it, but Tesla doesn't usually... Uh, like the suppliers putting their own uh, numbers on them, so or a manufacturer marking, and that's the go pedal. So that's all I have for you today. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate a subscription. If you want to support my channel, you can do so. There's a link in the description that will take you to my channel's about page where you can support me. Other than that. Uh, Look forward to doing the next video for you, for everyone. Everyone take care.